Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're checking out Timeless 3 and we're going to be looking at all the upgrades from Timeless 2. Let's jump right into it. So first off, you're going to notice that there is a large GUI overhaul. It's a lot more straightforward and a lot more familiar. The power, however, is still there. So before we had our two channels and a bunch of knobs over here. Now we've got a delay knob in the center with a feedback control and the cross modulation is still there. It is in the form of this slider right here. So what this means is, is just a lot more straightforward to work with. It's all sort of very visually presented. Let's go to a, a clean preset so we can see everything in action. So on the left here, we have the taps area. This is essentially your delay. So a pure delay, right, is you have your direct sound and then you have your delayed. So if we bring the, the feedback down, we can see here's the single delay, like so. And if we want to add delays, we simply dial the feedback up and we see it working. Now this top half is the left and this bottom half is the right. And we can add a delay between these so that the delays hit the, the left and right channels at different times, giving you a nice stereo image so we can simply slide it over on this delay knob and you can get that sort of an effect so from here you might say well i'd like to have more of these the, just the just the one set is interesting but i'd like to add more it's especially useful if you're using this for a spatial effect well you can you can do that you can come in and if you click on the taps area you can actually double click to add additional taps and there's, there's an entire editor workflow if you want to get into it on uh, moving these things and adjusting these things. But the cool thing is you can add them. And when you leave the taps editor, you can see your changes reflected and then the feedback is going to echo those. So it's like you have a ton of delays just built right in. Very nice. And from here, you can also do a couple cool things that I often like to do. If you come up to this drop down, there is a randomization option as well as some other pretty handy macros. I'm going to go for random and it's, it's just a good way to get some organic sounding things. And if you combine this with the feedback, we can have the feedback grow and shrink to create these sort of swells with some sounds. Check it out. So we've got some options here, just some just some cool things. So that is the taps area. And with the cross modulation, if you dial this up, you'll actually see it pop up between the two channels as these sort of orange, orange yellow looking spikes amongst the green ones, amongst the taps. And you can hear it doing its thing. So uh, all the power is still there, just in a package that's quite a bit easier to understand and work with. Another thing that has been vastly improved is ping pong is now super simple to do. There's simply a button for it. You can click it and boom, you have your ping pong. So significantly simpler before you really had to think about it. Now it's just, there it is. You're good to go. So very easy with the ping pong. Now from here, you may have noticed there's now a suite of effects and these are all modulatable in real time, even the diffusion effect. So we'll go ahead and turn this on. And so here it is with low diffusion. And here it is with high diffusion. In fact, let's have it play while I, while I mess with this. So we'll have it low. And it might help as well if we go ahead and come up to the taps, whoops, and we just reset it to the default. And I can move the delay knob. And you don't get any kind of weird artifacts, no clicking or anything like that. It's a smooth automation. So this is a, uh, I was told it was extremely tricky to pull off. So it has been done and is available to you. Very nice. From here, you've also got some dynamics processing now. You have some pitch, uh, a pitch knob here, which I had made a series of presets 
focused around pitch manipulation. So it's really nice to just have a control here that just automatically will do it. Very nice. You've got a lo-fi effect. And finally, a distortion. Combine these things together, like the distortion of the drive knob with the dynamics knob, and you get some pretty aggressive things, especially if you have the feedback pretty high. So very nice. The next major overhaul you're really going to notice is the modulation. So the modulation has been totally reworked. If I go ahead and add a slider here, it's very visual now. So if I attach this to the wet control and I give it 100%, I can bring the wet control down and it's positively correlated. So when I move this, it turns the wet control up and down. But you can see there is a very visual cue that this is happening. So very nice. Uh, of, of the modulators, we have the slider, the XY control, which is like a two-dimensional slider, the LFO, and the LFOs, if you click on them, You've got a couple options in here, but something that I find really useful is the keyboard. You can snap to pitch, and you can also use this as a sequencer, not just a regular old LFO. So if you click this plus icon, you can add steps and treat it like a sequencer, especially if you use the sync option. And you can actually have per step, you can have a different function. So you can go like sine wave, you can go to a triangle wave. We could have the next one be, you know, something else, some other function, and you can change the glide so you get really snappy square wave kind of a shape, or you can move that down. So a bunch of options here from pitch effects to just driving things to changing the delay knob with specific timings uh, to alternating them. These, the LFOs are going to be ex an extremely useful tool if you really want to dive deep into the modulation. After that, we've got some envelope generators, which these can be triggered off of a, a threshold, but you can also trigger them with MIDI or a sidechain, which is extremely useful, especially if you want to use external things to trigger these, like uh, a MIDI line to trigger a specific delay effect to happen at different times. Uh, I've made heavy use of this in the past. We also have envelope followers. Now, this can be great if you want your incoming signal to change how the parameters are affected. This could be especially useful for controlling the feedback. So the feedback only goes higher when no sound is playing, or you could have it go the other way. But I find that when it comes to taming the feedback in a particular preset, if you're getting a little more intense, envelope follower can be fantastic. Finally, if you have something set up with permanent MIDI CCs, you can have that built right into your patch. And you won't have to set that up every single time which could be really handy. So the modulation section completely overhauled. Let's go ahead and take a look at some presets, give you an idea of what's going on here. And let's go over to some of the modulation ones just to sort of show you some of the more interesting ideas. And uh, let's just take a brief listen. So there is a little bit of a preview of many of the patches that come with it and a general overview of what's new in Timeless 3. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. 
and have a blessed day.